Hi, in this video tutorial I'm going to go through vector addition. The methods that I'm going to look at here are essentially graphical methods making use of trigonometry. I'm going to go through two methods, firstly the parallelogram method and secondly the tip to tail method. So first let's look at the parallelogram method. But before we do that, uh, let's write the equation uh, describing what we're doing. So we have um, a resultant vector here, um, we'll call R, and you'll see this little squiggly line underneath, that just indicates that it's a vector. So the resultant vector R is equal to the vector F1, and again with a little squiggly line underneath to show that it's a vector, plus F2. Okay, so in this case we can consider these vectors to be forces, and we're adding up uh, or determining the resultant of these two vector forces. So the first step in the parallelogram method is to draw a line parallel to one of your vectors, so in this case uh, parallel to F1 at the tip of the other vector. So here's my line at the tip of F2 parallel to my vector force F1. And then the next step is to draw another line. In this case, here we've got uh, this line parallel to the force or the vector F2, starting from the tip of the vector F1. And apologies for the little bit of traffic noise that you might hear in the background as I'm doing this recording. Okay, so once we have our parallel parallelogram drawn, so here's our parallelogram like this, the next step is to draw a line from the base of our two forces or two vectors across to the opposite corner of the parallelogram. And that line that we've drawn here will be the resultant vector or, or force of F1 plus F2. Okay, so that's the parallelogram method. So now we'll look at the vector tip to tail method. And we'll start off with our two vectors, um, F1 and F2 that we had before. And the method here is to move one of our vectors such that we move the tail of that vector to the tip of the other vector. So here we've moved F1, uh, sorry we've moved F2 and we've placed the tail of F2 at the tip of F1. And the next step then is to draw a line from the base of the original uh, vector F1 to the tip of the second vector F2. So we can see that a little bit more clearly that we have F1 plus F2 and the resultant is R. Okay, so that's the tip to tail method. Now it doesn't matter uh, in which order we do it or which uh, vector we move. So let's have a look at um, using the, the tip to tail method again, but this time we'll move the vector F1 to the head of the vector F2. Okay, so we can write that as an equation again. So we have our resultant vector R equals F1 plus F2 or is equal to F2 plus F1. Okay, so this time we're going to move the vector F1 so that the tail of F1 is now at the tip of F2. And as before, the next step is to draw the line from the base of F2 to the tip of F1 to give us our resultant R. And if we show uh, what we got before, uh, we can see that that's uh, the same resultant. And if we superimpose the two um, diagrams on top of each other, uh, we can see that we've got the same resultant R, whether we did F1 plus F2 or F2 plus F1. Okay, so let's put some numbers on that and do some calculations. So let's say... Uh, F1 is 5 newtons, F2 is 3 newtons, and the angle between is 40 degrees. 
So from before we have our uh, triangle with F1 plus F2 and our resultant. So now to calculate our resultant force R or the resultant vector uh, we need to do a bit of trigonometry. So uh, you should remember from high school your uh, cosine and sine rule. So if we have a triangle uh, labelled like this, so we have sides A, B and C and angles um, A, B and C also. So this angle here, capital A, is opposite the side little a. Uh, angle B here is opposite the side little b and so on. So our cosine rule firstly is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. You might know it in slightly different form than that. Uh, doesn't really matter um, as long as you uh, write the equation correctly. Uh, I don't expect you to remember that. I'll always give you that equation uh, in a quiz or an exam. The other um, equation that we use is the sine rule. So A over sine angle A, B over sine B equals C over sine C. Uh, so in this case we know the length of the sides. So um, F2 is 3 newtons or 3 units. F1 is uh, 5 newtons. And we've also been told the angle between the two vectors is 40 degrees. Um, so we need to work out from that uh, an angle inside our triangle here. So the easiest one to work out is this one here. Uh, and uh, you should be able to see from your trigonometry that that will be 180 degrees minus 40 degrees, which will be uh, 140 degrees. Okay, so we now have uh, the length of two sides and the angle um, between those two sides. So we can now use our cosine rule to calculate um, the resultant force. So having written out the equation, we can now uh, put in the values that we um, were given and have worked out. And if we do the calculations, we'll find that the resultant force is 7.55 newtons. Okay, let's say we also want to find one of the angles. So, for example, um, the angle here. Uh, we can now use the sine rule uh, to do that. So we have F2 over sine phi equals R over sine 140. And rearranging that equation to make phi the subject of the equation, um, we have inverse sine of F2 sine 140 over R gives us an angle of 14.8 degrees. Okay, so that's it. So I hope this helps you with your vector addition.